is it uh, outcroppings or is it soft? It's soft. The rays actually. You're on, but that screen's frozen. <laughs> Thank so you. I'm going to open up the March 22nd, March 21st, excuse me, Joy Chan Conservation Commission. And uh, we have some business and some discussion issues to address, and then we have, uh, let's see, four hearings. And it be, being on or after seven, I'm going to, let's see, open a new RDA for... 23 Parish Road. If I could have the applicant and or consultant, and if you could identify yourself for the record, please. Oh, for the record, my name is Bob Grassel from Engineering Land Services. Thank you. I have the certificate of mailings. Thank you. This is uh, 23 Parish Road. Uh, it's an existing dwelling. It has a failed septic system. Uh, we're here tonight to um, replace this system. Um, the site has um, wetlands at the rear of the property. We have flagged by Sea Camp Environmental uh, an A series of A1 through A14 showing this blue line right here. And we also have wetlands located across the, the roadway on an abutting lot uh, B series from D1 to D4. First yellow line is the 50 foot wetland setback on the side of the wetland. And this yellow line here is the 50 foot from the uh, wetland lo located across the parish road. Uh, the second line would be the 75 foot no build. And the third line would be the 100 foot wetland buffer. Um, the existing dwelling is a three bedroom dwelling. Uh, it's shown in brown right here. It has a paved driveway uh, off of Parish Road. It's uh, serviced by Town Water. It's shown in this white blue right line right here. The existing system right now comes out at the rear of the house. The tank that's located right now. Uh, half of it would be underneath the uh, upper level deck, and the other half of the tank would be um, out on the grass area. What's that circular area in the back? Right here? Yes. That's the existing uh, leach area. Leach field? Yeah, that's, that's the one that's failed. Um, that's approximately within 75 feet of the weapon right now. Um, basically, this is a tree line uh, right here that traverses along uh, the rear of the property, which is the stone wall at the rear of the property, and then comes back out towards uh, Parish uh, Road. Uh, the remaining land is all grassed area right in here. It's all lawn uh, mold. Um, we were out there, we conducted soil tests with the Board of Health uh, right here, and um, we ran into a type of class four soil, which is a very poor drainage soil. Uh, mostly so, silty clay loam. So just, you, I'm just questioning, you, you filed this as an RDA? Yes. I picked up on that actually today for the first time, just it's not typically done as an RDA here. Yes. Um, that was going to be one of my comments. Okay. Um, we're proposing um, a leach area of a pressure dosing system, uh, which would minimize the, uh, the area on the lot. The entire leach area, uh, proposed leach area, is outside the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, the only work that would be in the buffer zone would be replacing this, the existing septic tank. Uh, with a new 1,500-gallon mono, monolithic tag, which is um, required by the uh, Board of Health and DP, and a 1,000-gallon uh, pump chamber. Uh, that would pump up to a manifold <coughs> and you'd have to, uh, a pressure distribution system. So did you, did you just say the entire leach field is outside of the 100-foot zone? Yes, it is. Right here. The only thing that would be in the gratings would be the grading for the uh, for the for the leach area because we'd have a raised uh, mound system. Uh -huh. um, this is the only grading right in here, uh, right in here. This is right here, and the grading that's required uh, right on this side right here. And you, 
in the arcs, the replacement of the tanks. And, and, and what's the plan for the existing? You have to close, you're going to fill that in? Yeah, that's just the uh, pipe and stone that if you don't feed it, it will just die off. That, that won't be done. Usually if it's a leach pit, they usually pump it and crush it. It's a concrete structure. This is just pipe and stone that the dead leave in this place. Uh, what we're proposing to do is, um, during construction, is just install a silt sock right here to uh, during construction, which would be also the limit of work. <coughs> So the only, re the only, basically the only thing in the buffer zone is a little bit of grading here, here, and the replacement of the tanks. But the entire leach area is out of the 100-foot uh, wetland buffer. Yeah, as Steve said, it's it's kind of uh, unusual to to file, at least here, uh, separate RDA process. Um, we also have. Uh, Water health approval. Uh, okay. Do we have uh, a DEP? No, we don't because you didn't. Because they didn't RDA. Yeah. Again, we've never done a septic system in an RDA. I um. No, we've actually sent some of them back, as I recall. I. Because we can, if we if we have a positive determination, it has to it has to go into a notice of intent. Yeah, I mean you, you're doing. You know, if you want to approve it, you negative. If you want, if you believe it should be a notice of intent, um, then you, they can either withdraw or you can issue a negative. The only positive. The only grading that would be the there would be no grade change for the tanks. The only we were also proposing a line around the system to limit the amount of grading in the buffer zone. Uh, so we're trying everything uh, for the client to save money and time. Uh, the filing fees for the RDA. It's going to be a very expensive system. Any uh, comments from commissioners? Well, the field's out of the uh, 100 foot. I mean, my only concern is the precedence of doing a subject system under an RDA. Yeah, I mean, we because do, we have a separate line item for our septic systems for notice of intents that are 50, it's fifty dollars. So there's really no cost savings to doing an RDA versus a notice of intent on this type of project. It gives us it doesn't give us a lot of control over you know, regulating um, an RDA. I mean, once we give a negative determination, it pretty much open gives so, them. Yeah, so my I mean, again, there's some cost savings for the applicant on not having to register this, but the DEP also doesn't get any opportunity to give any comment not that they do uh, all the time but I, again my only concern it, it the system needs to be replaced you know everything's reasonable my only concern is the precedence that the commission would be setting by doing yeah, as, as I recall, yeah as I recall we've actually kicked a few back um, that were you know having yeah. significant impact at that point uh, and I think at the time it was a snip like it was 20 feet from a wetland so it was kind of a no-brainer yeah. um, to be honest with you there's some that think that, you know, if the leaching system's out of the 100, you know, a tank doesn't count as a component. It does. Um, again, my only concern is the precedence of set, you'd set. You could do it, and for this project, it's fine. It'll get installed properly. I'll inspect it. You know, what's, it'll, what's it'll the, go its course. What's the timeline you're looking to get this done, that your client is looking to get this uh, done? As soon as the April 1st season opens up, he wants to get that installed. He wants to put the uh, house on the market. Yeah, my, my, my thoughts, I mean, I, I, I really don't like to change the precedent on how we do these. I mean, I'd, I'd certainly be willing to apply what fees you've uh, currently incurred to, to um, do it under an ID, I mean, do it under an NOI. So to give you guys some options, to mull up, two options, you're going to give a, a negative determination, pretty much meaning you, you're approving it. So a negative determination, you're kind of approving the project, and then a positive determination bumps it and says it's, it's a, it really should be a notice of intent. Please feel free to come back, file a notice of intent, and kind of resubmit the entire project. 
that would um, give notification to the DEP and give the, t the, com the commission more control over conditioning it and overseeing the project. Where when you do the RDA, you pretty much say, go ahead and do it. And there's really no oversight potential there. Not as much. There's always, always oversight when it comes to our jurisdiction. So the commission has to pretty much make a decision on which way to go. So, I mean, just again, the, the thought uh, in terms of uh, you filing it this way, your client filing it this way, I mean, was it, was it a price issue? I mean, I'm just trying to understand. Um, yeah, it was a price issue. It was you just wanted to get, get it through. And uh, we put the system outside the 100 foot buffer. Uh, I felt it was, I, Personally, I didn't feel it was, it's, it's a lawned area, it's, there's no tree cutting. I mean, there is tree cutting, but it's outside the 100 foot right here. Um, the grading, it's, it's, it's in a lawned area. Um, the tanks would be at the same, you know, that grade wouldn't change. The only grade would be changing would be just for the leach area, just for three to one slope on that side and then on this side. That's yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really have an issue with the way it's laid out. Again, I, my, my issue more is with, you know, the documentation side, the, the way it, the way it's filed. I mean, I, I'm not recommending that you move it at this point in any any different location. I, I just don't think the RDA is the right. It's strange without a DEP number. That's the standard we usually do. That's my thoughts anyway. Again, my, my concern is the precedence. I'm not looking at this project. I'm looking at the future projects. And if if you guys accept this, technically going forward, you always have to accept them. You, you can't make exceptions. So if you, it's kind of a precedent setting move. If you do approve this, this as an RDA, all future ones, technically, I can start recommending to people they can start filing them. Because right now I say, this is not, you're not supposed to do an RDA, is when people come to the window and ask. So in more, much more complicated systems, it would potentially create a problem too so Cause where's the line this one just has the tanks in the system the next one could have the whole leaching system five feet from the pond right um, it's good that the fields out of the hundred foot but it's I mean that that's what I, I mean the systems in currently in failure yes it is it's breaking out right now I mean, if the commission wanted to have them find those for intent, we can do it on an emergency cert where they can start doing the work the second they. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure if it. it's if it's a if it's an emergency situation like that. I mean, and, uh, and we also have board health approval. Also, I'm just yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm not I'm not questioning how it's laid out. I mean, I'd, I I want to see it done. I'm I'm just concerned of of the way the paperwork end is filed. I mean, I'd I'd work with you on terms of uh, if we need to do that. In an emergency sense, but I, I really would prefer it be an NOI. Um, I certainly, from my perspective, I'd be willing to apply fees that were paid for the RDA process to the NOI process, and, and you know get it into uh, the next hearing. And again, even even allow an emergency, the work can even start. Yeah, the, pa that. the paperwork can catch up after the fact. And then you have to notify all the abutters and uh, put it. Yeah, you really the fields. Where it's going to go? I mean, it's, the plan will change. Right. It's just a, it's basically the fine paperwork. It, it's paperwork. The the plan is there's no changes needed. I mean, I, I'd almost wonder if there's a way of conti of continuing off of this to the same date as the notice of intent, as far as notification to abutters and yeah. adding the paper and stuff like that. But I think it gets a little murky. Yeah. I, you know, I'm trying to save some money yeah. at the applicant's well, end. Well, DEP, I'm not sure they're right. they're getting understaffed now, and and I'm not sure how long a DEP know take time to get back to, to close the hearing yeah um, but you i mean i think what we're talking is almost allowing the work to go forward as emergency cert mm. so the paperwork can catch up same with the dp paperwork too yeah. again i don't believe that the dp is going to come back with any significant comments it's really right because we can kind of, i'll work with the applicant if it is an emergency and i'll talk to the board of health if it is an emergency we can yeah, allow so them to move the, forward the concept changes basically the way we do business if we do it this way yeah and so the two options if you're going to go that route is um you know, you can deny the project, or the applicant can withdraw. withdraw well, without withdraw. Prejudice. You could withdraw without prejudice, and, and again, we can we can apply this. Um, it's fifty dollars either way. We just, I mean, we can't waive the DEP fee. The DEP right. has to get paid. They're, you know, the DEP is a different agency. We can have no control over them. But I don't. I don't want to see a change. Yeah. Does anyone have any comments as, as far as the way the uh, drawing is laid out? Nope. Not at all. 
butters to 23? Well, they wouldn't have been notified. Right. No. no, they were notified. We require notification as far as an RDA. Yeah, I did. Just so we did do that. So we always do that because previously there was a concern of doing RDAs without notification to a butter. So we actually require a butter notification even on RDAs, which you is not required by the state. He, he, he gave me the paperwork already. Okay. So we're good. So now we have to positive Either. determination? Correct. Or the applicant withdraw without prejudice. One saves me paperwork, the other one doesn't. <clears throat> What's your pleasure? Sorry, it saves us paperwork. Sorry, I'm gonna roll you into the bus. <laughs> Is that something you want we're willing to entertain? I because I'll, I'll withdraw without, without prejudice and file a notice of intent. If that's, uh, I didn't, you know, personally, I didn't think there was gonna be a, an impact on on the buffer. Um, it's, it's just the way I know it's just the filing system. I'm just saying it's just so, such a minor, minor project in the buffer zone. Yeah, it's it's a tough one to swallow, but yeah. I don't see how the commission can do it with the precedent setting because our regs do kind of, they mentioned components. If it was, if we just in the past just dealt with leaching system, like where the liquid actually goes down, then I would agree, but we, we treat component yeah, as, as right. part of the system and this one definitely has components in the system in the buffer in the buffer thank you so so i think we we probably need to make a motion to allow the um i don't think i've ever had one so you can't hurt a motion to accept the withdrawal without prejudice right essentially allow the uh, allow the applicant to withdraw without prejudice can you tell them can you tell them no how does that i mean that's the I, I'm not, I don't remember the procedural. Well, no, the to, procedural. We we have an open RDA hearing right now. So it's more so of a motion to close the hearing. Allow them and essentially, right. yeah, withdraw. So. Okay. And I and I don't also. I mean, I would um, entertain again allowing the fees to be applied. Yeah. There's no no uh, reason. So we still can. motion to positive determination. No, he's no, withdrawing. So we're going. Oh, to so I would entertain a motion to allow the the applicant to withdraw without prejudice and apply. Motion to allow the applicant to withdraw without prejudice, prejudice. And, and allow them to apply the fees that they've already paid towards towards the notice of intent. Correct. And so, I know there's a motion being no one seconded. Yeah, sorry. I need a second. Second. There's been a motion. It's been seconded to allow the applicant to withdraw the RDA without prejudice and, and apply the fees uh, that were paid for the RDA towards uh, notice of intent. Is uh, are there any further discussion? My only question is just to make sure that everyone's okay with the plan as it is. Yes. I can have it pre written so at the next meeting it's a one meeting in and out. Yep. Okay, thank you. Anything about the emergency? Yeah, that's what I was. I mean, I, that's more of an offline. You don't, I need to check with the board yeah. of health. If it is an emergency, I can take care of that with my and authority. In the office. Yeah, any actually, any, any commissioner could authorize in yeah. an emergency and but then we come to the next meeting. Steve. Yeah, so I don't think it's relevant to the motion. I think okay. that's more administratively, I can take care of that app, um, offline. And then Steve would just let us know at the, you know, the next meeting. It, it had to be done in an emergency yep. basis and then yeah. and the then filing proceeds. And then basically paper trail. Yep. Same with the, um, the National Good Project we're hearing tonight. Paperwork can always catch up later. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All abstaining. I'll obtain a motion to close uh, the RDA for 23 Parish Road. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close 23 Three. Parish Road. Is there second. a We have a motion that's been seconded to close the RDA for 23 Parish Road. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining. Thank you. And we'll try and get it done as efficiently as possible. Thank you, Reverend. All right. It being on or after 7.15, I'm going to open up a new NRAD for 68 Elm Street, Pembroke School, GCC 2013-05. Uh, that is a wetland delineation report. So I could have the applicant and or consultant. Um, to be honest with you, I don't see anyone here. And I was not notified that we would be 
applicant list. So I'm not really sure what to tell you. Um, obviously, we can just go check with the speakers when you post a one. Oh, okay. All the people at home can't hear one of the things we're talking about. Um, I guess I can give a little overview of what they're up to. Mm -hmm. and Please do. And you guys can decide how you want to proceed. Obviously, we have to continue it at some point. Um, pretty straightforward. It's in preparation of the final notice of intent for the new school. And we have a bunch of wetlands, and they're just looking for us to confirm where the wetlands are and so they can go ahead with their design of the new school. It's really not too much as far I'm, as... I'm assuming wetlands. that the lineation was quite a few years ago. Um, no, recently. As part of the redesign, it was done recently. I don't know off the top of my head who actually did the work. So I dropped some plans in front of you. Again, it, it's to give you kind of a big picture of the new school. You, there's really only one. The whole back of the property is a uh, wetland. Uh, most of it is off property, but it kind of gives you an idea of the buffer and where it in encroaches. The, the 100 foot buffer off that wetland. Um, so if you have it orientated north straight up, the right edge, there's a long wetland and it just barely encroaches on the edge of the building at 100 feet. So that area is in our jurisdiction, technically. Again, we're not really looking at the construction at this point. But I'm just trying to get you guys orientated. So there's that wetland edge. Then there's a small isolated wetland in the middle of the cul-de-sac, the looping road that comes in. So the road comes in and does this loop. Far left, whatever that is, western corner, there's a small isolated wetland in there. And they are showing a little bit of work in that buffer. So really we're just being asked to confirm those wetland lines. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably a hundred flags out there, give or right. take. It's traditional at some point, you know, when we, when we look at the wetland line, we will actually go walk wetland lines when we get to that point. To verify. So, again, because the, the applicant is not here, I don't want to go too deep into this, uh, yeah. at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's really just opening overview. it to continue it at this point, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I have got an estimate from BFC Group um, to do the delineation, to do the delineation review um, for $3,454, which, by the way, cannot start till April 15th. We can't have boots on the ground as far as checking delineations till April 15th. Correct. Um, I did meet with a few, um, I've met in the past with a lot of school community members getting up to this point of the project in the building committee. Um, again, this is a town project. So, for example, we don't do third-party reviews of culverts. If we're going to replace a culvert in town, often we don't have the highway department. We don't do a third-party review on that. It's, right. It is what it is. It's five feet from the wetland, or if it's two feet, either way, the culvert has to get replaced. Um, said 21 I'm bringing this up more on my own. No one's asked me for a, an official waiver to that. Asking not to do a third party waiver. Yeah. I'm just bringing it up as what is what is often done with town projects is you don't kind of spend more money of town funds to redo the line. What I do know is I've been on this property probably 10 times. I have seen that isolated wetland. Um, if the commission is interested in discussing that that is one option to kind of not do a third party review and just kind of work with what we have and work with my knowledge of the property and allow this to move on to a notice of intent um, it would save um, a chunk of time and it would obviously right. save some money again i'm bringing it up just because we have done that in the past on town projects this might not be one of them you want to do that on but i just want to make sure that you guys have all um you know whatever's on my head i can give to you guys well, I, I think it really depends on the magnitude of the project. I mean, if it's a very if it's a small town project. Yep. Um, yep. But interestingly enough, the, the the wetland that is here, they're just barely encroaching on our buffer. So scope wise, this is a huge project. And very but there's little. actually very little wetland impact on it. 
Not like um, the... And we will be involved during the notice of intent, and that's really where the heavy lifting is done as far as protection and, 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 and looking at the activity and what they're looking to do near that wetland. Right. So it's an interesting angle. Some of the culverts probably have more impact. The culvert replacements have more wetland implications than a new school. And again, you'll get a shot at it, keeping in mind we're just looking at a delineation. We're not looking at the building. We're not looking at stormwater. We're not looking at any site work. It's kind of... It's pre-planning anyway. Except or not, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you look at um, the National Grid Project, it is what it is. We didn't ask to check where the wetlands are. It's just, you know, we well, just say I mean, we're not the, the, goal, the goal of this, this type of a hearing is to accept the wetland line. Exactly. And it locks it for three years. So there's a risk involved in it. Don't get me wrong. There's a risk involved, but I'm just trying to give you guys different um, options. Have you walked the property? Uh, too many times. I, Do you agree? I, I certainly Do you wouldn't. agree with I don't have a comfort yeah. level of accepting lines without walking them. Yeah, at least right. going out there. I'm not, except, I'm not saying, I, I've, I've told you guys before when you asked me that question, does it seem reasonable? It seems reasonable. I will never say it's to the foot. Right. Or to the inch. But to be honest with you, say it's four feet off, what are you going to do different? Let me ask you, when was the, um, when was the uh, delineation done? I don't know. Time? time -wise? Sometimes that's like this. I don't see. Do you like to do a site walk? And this time of the year, you're not going to be able to see much? We would have to schedule it. You'd have to schedule yeah. it. Post, yeah. post April 15th. Yeah. And given that the applicant's not here, it's not like we can enclose it out anyways. Mm. Right. But you, right, per regulations, you can't check on it before April 15th, and kind of the logic of it, there's a foot of snow outside. Yeah, so it's that, not even one of those seasons we, you can challenge that. That's you know? how we evolved that, that part of the regulation, because I, you know, when I started in this business, we'd get called out and, and, and doing delineation would be three feet of snow on the ground. We'd be out with, you know, up to your knees, mm -hmm. trying to find blueberry bushes. So they were at, there, though. You know, they were there. At the minimum, we need to continue it to the next meeting. That's a given. Right. Applicant's not here. I just, you know, and you guys, might want some time to think about it as far as do you want to do a site walk um, it's pretty anticlimactic that little isolated wetland mm -hmm. it's kind of a dry wetland not one that you're going to need to bring your mucking boots out to we can all stand around it it's just you know almost the size of this area in here so well the question is, is it is it um, is it, uh, yeah, is it a vernal it, at all it did not have any vernal pool characteristics in my opinion their wetland scientists are more in a better season and you know it, they didn't bring up any concerns regarding that in the back wetland, it's a fairly steep bank back there. Again, is that line accurate to the inch? I'm, I can't say, but it's off in those steep banked wetlands like that. Yeah, it's not going to change two feet. So really, all we can do tonight is continue it. We can't yeah. we can't schedule the you know the, the site walk. We need to coordinate that well, with the um, hypothetically you could. The applicant doesn't have to be there, but it's nice to kind of play nicely and make sure that they have some representation there. Well, I'll make a motion to continue to April 25th, 7.15. Sounds good. We have a motion, and uh, second. Yeah, second. we have a motion that's been seconded to continue to April 25th at 7.15, and that's for 68 Elm Street, the uh, Hanrad. Is there Stay any back. further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining. Being on or after 735, I'm going to open up a new RDA for a utility corridor off of Hampshire Lane, GCC 2013-03. If I could have the applicant and a consultant, and if you could identify yourself for the record, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is Matt Kelly from the AHB Group. Good evening. Just to give a quick overview, um, I did work with the applicant to get the work done under the emergency certification process. So the work has been done, these guys. Work has been done. Okay. Um, you know, I think it was more of a scheduling issue at our end. Um, yep. We couldn't get them on the agenda fast enough. And mm -hmm. There was a small delay at our end. 
again, in the end, they got their work done in the time frame they were happy with. We're just pretty much trying, the paperwork's catching up with the process at this point. You know, as far as we asked them to investigate some access issues that we had with Hampshire Plain, and I'm presuming you'll have some input on that. Yeah. So just a quick summary of the, of the work itself. Uh, it was some pretty uh, general maintenance work where the cross braces on, uh, on the 345 line that runs between, uh, I guess the best geographical description would be between Uptack Road and Groveland and then Route 97 in Groveland. So there's about a mile of right of way that runs between uh, those two roads. That is located in Georgetown and uh, what the what National Grid, what, what they proposed and what they did. The work was completed yesterday. Uh, Crews were on site about 9 o'clock. They're in the right of way and, and off the right of way by uh, 1.30. And the work consisted of uh, tightening and replacing bolts on the cross braces on the uh, 345 kV line out there. Uh, the right of way was accessed off of Hampshire Lane with, <coughs> with low ground pressure equipment. Uh, and and I did, uh, we, I did uh, come into the commission on, on February 21st. At that time, the commission had some concerns regarding the work which uh, we did comply with. First was there was a, a small wetland crossing between structures 189 and 188, which crews were able to cross that wetland on foot, so there was no, no impacts there. Uh, the second one was uh, uh, Due to the uh, due to the rare species out there, th this area is mapped as a uh, rare species habitat uh, for two species of reptile and a, and a species of uh, amphibian. So, the commission wanted to see full time monitoring out there. So I was out there all day yesterday with the crew. And the uh, third request by the commission was for uh, National Grid to install a, uh, a gate. Uh, at the end of Hampshire Lane, right. which, uh, which National Grid is going to take care of. Um, they, they were actually on top of it trying to get it done this week, but with the snowfall, they're just going to wait until, until the snow melts. Going to install a pipe gate at the end of Hampshire Lane and then uh, also uh, place some boulders selectively to block ATV access at that point. Yeah, if you were out there, you probably, I don't know, with the snow, you you, you may have seen how they kind of get right yeah. around it. They just circle. They wrap around there, yeah. So I'm, I was out there with um, the applicant and um, Crit, um, George Comiskey, and we walked there and kind of figured out a game plan. So I think. Um, Before the snow fell? Uh, yeah, it was like two weeks yeah, it was, ago. It was, it was the week after the February 21st meeting. Yeah. So again, there was still snow on the ground, but you could get a feel for the area sure. enough to come up with a plan. The area okay. gets plowed right down to the to the gate, so there's there's two or three feet of plowed snow sitting in front of it. So Steve, have you, had, have you been out there since uh, the work was done yesterday, no? I have not, no. But everything is done? Everything was yeah. done, yeah. It's, it's all above yeah. ground, yeah. minus yeah. the access, so I, honestly I wasn't actually planning going out to inspect because I can't tell if they tighten some bolts or not. It's more what they would have done on the ground. The foot and half of snow on the ground, I just. Yeah, even from, it wasn't from the much endangered to species uh, situation, that nothing has really come out at this point. Uh, everything is still in hibernation mode, yeah, which is good. Yeah, it, was, it, was good it was good timing as far as that goes. Let's see. Are there any other comments? Wish that one's so smooth yeah. all the time. My only comment is just to make, um, you know, I'll write in some um, work with me on the gate and stuff like that, just coordinating. Sure. I mean, yeah. you guys have been doing great up to now, I'm not concerned, but just to add that in. It only helps kind of, them out too, you know. That's a little bit of the give back part that I think is we need to follow through on. It all sounds great. They got what they want. They just need to make sure that pipe gets put in right. I have no problem with that. My other thing is just I'm try, hoping someone in the town can get a key. Just because when there's something going down, we can't, you know, coordinating, and it's just so much easier to just have a key in house. Like, like I told you uh, by email, yep. National Grid Real Estate, they they've been trying to coordinate with the fire and police department, and and they didn't see, they didn't have a reason to have a double, yep. double lock on there. But I mean, if yeah, National I, Grid has no issues with giving. I just put it on there again. They don't want it, so they put it on their keychain. You know, in the in the police department, a double so lock, it's, so a double lock with a combo on it, so it's a safety issue. Yeah, I, mean, I just it's usually standardized. Yeah. 
you know. National Grid has no issues with working with the fire police. And again, I, the, the fire, I haven't talked to the fire yet. They said, oh, what do, what do we need that for? And I haven't had a chance to talk to them. I think there are some value to have it. Better to have it than not have it. Sure, I agree. If it's sitting on a police board with 30 other keys, it's not doing any harm. It's not falling into the wrong hands. Yep. But for example, I know um, I'm trying to work with mosquito control to get back there. There's a few hundred tires in a wetland that we want to have pulled out. You know, and you know, I'd coordinate with these guys, to make sure they're okay with it. But it'd be nice to have that capability. You know, to and, do that. and we've had to work with the, the environmental police department ATVs to go up there, and, you know, and, yeah. and they might need access so up there. So I don't think the you know that someone in the town needs to have access to getting through there. And there might be a fire car out there, an accident, someone's illegally using ATVs and they get hurt. But I just think they're not necessarily thinking of all the potential reasons to have to get through that gate. They just think there's no houses back there. We don't need access. Again, I haven't checked with them, but I know. <clears throat> That someone in the town really should have a key to get through there. They don't mind, so I'm just gonna yeah. kind of follow through with that logic. Safe than sorry. Exactly. Well, if you know where the car, actually, are there any abutters to the project out on uh, Hampshire Lane, Utility Carter? Seeing that there are no abutters, I would entertain a motion to issue a negative determination, also with a condition of um, you know, installing the new gate. Coordinating with me. Coordinating with Steve on that. Make a motion to negative determination on the utility corridor project to also work with Steve in the future, near future, about a new pipe gate and lock access. Second. We have a motion that's been seconded to issue a negative determination for the uh, utility corridor off of Hampshire Woods Lane. And that would also include a condition to uh, install an improved pipe gate with also key access to be coordinated with Steve, our agent. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining. I'll entertain a motion to close the RDA for the utility court off Hampshire Lane. Motion to close. Second. We have a motion that's been seconded to close the RDA. Uh, utility corridor off of Hampshire Lane. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a few minutes. send you electronically. You want to do that? Yeah. 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 Just scan them and send them to me. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I have a open space member that would if you guys want to use the next couple minutes to sure. just write that um, Jeffrey Wade has sent over on that email a few weeks ago he's interested in getting an open space committee right now to be honest with you we don't have an open space committee we don't have enough members active uh, we are in the process of creating the new next latest greatest open space plan it would be really nice to have an open space committee because that they're one of the people that has to sign off on it uh, what so, what's your name uh, Jeff Wade. What well, didn't we have? Do we have an open space committee? We did, didn't we? We did, but members didn't ask to get reappointed. Okay. People don't show up; they just kind of fade. Yep. Um, right now, we only have two act, two active members. Keep we need? active. So. Do we, do we need? Um, five. five. I we, believe five. Five openings. Who's on the committee right now, Steve? Um, Dick Talbot and Harry Petelia. Um, you guys could change that to have three members if there's an issue getting quorum. So right now there's two. If you guys appoint Jeff, that's three. You have a quorum. They have a quorum, but one person can't make it in their um, toes. So that's, you know, if you guys are okay with appointing Jeff, we can move forward with that. Make um, a point, make a motion to appoint? Yeah, but after that, at some point, we could have a discussion because we're having a hard time number. filling it. And again, sure. there's pluses and minuses to that. Um, I don't think that's a decision we make today. It's just something well, I know is going to come up in the future. Yeah, the, the, I think as, as a commission, we have to revisit the whole open space committee yep. in terms yep. of its function and, and get it more functional. Exactly. Again, historically, they have not been very active. Um, I don't get feedback from them when I ask questions. You know, they're, they're not an active group, and so, as most subcommittees are, by the way. Um, so we, we probably could revisit that, but this is just one quick paper pushing exercise we could do today for the next meeting. Want to make a motion? To appoint him? Mr. Wade. Yeah, make a motion to appoint him. What's his name again? Um, Jeffrey Wade. Jeffrey Wade. 
to the Open Space Committee. Second. Perfect. Oh, I think uh, you would also include for, for a term. Second. It's usually a term of yep. a year. Um, two years. We're trying to keep in line with the other members, so it's two-year okay. appointment. So we got a second. There's Did you a second? I second. Uh, we have a motion that's been seconded to appoint Jeffrey Wade to the Open Space Committee for a term uh, of two years. Is there any further discussion? In favor? Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? All abstaining. Thank you. So, making a note, we have a, a, a quorum now for our Open Space Committee. That's a Maybe we could encourage them to have a meeting. I will open that request. You know that guy, Harry. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, I think we're st still a minute or two shy, maybe. A few bills. It's your pleasure. A few bills? Sure. Last two later. Want to pay a couple of mine? Mm. Yeah. And what do we have for bills? CPC. CPC. Sorry, two seconds. I wasn't ready for this. Um, CPC for the Camp Management Project, $1,114 for electrical work. They need um, power to the Boy Scout camp. Yankee Pine, also CPC for the camp project, $314. Amesbury Industry Supplies, some hardware, $23. And then the two revolving accounts, kind of, um, this is conservation expense. This is our um, postal meter, $30 for postage. And two Camp Denison revolving bills, for power, 188 and 50. So, as you know, they break up the meters, one at the, the scout camp and then one at the main lodge. That's the bills. Just for, just for, uh, for uh, my reference, how mm -hmm. long is that, that electric bill? Is that a month? Is that a month? Month. Okay. Motion to pay the bills. Second. We have a motion. It's been seconded to pay the bills, as read by Steve. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining? I'm going to hand them around. And then, um, so you, you, you say the top slot for the chair. You just sign them on as well. Below it. And you do where you see a sticky note. Okay. It being on or after 7.50 p.m., I'm going to uh, reopen Notice of Intent for 27 Pillsbury Street, GCC 2013-02. And the applicant has uh, submitted plans for in-ground pool. Right. Um, Have the applicant identify yourself for the record. Can I jump in a little out of step one second? I believe we have a Mullen, Mullen rule quorum issues related to this project. So before we discuss anything of substance, I think we need to resolve that. Yes. Because if we don't handle this properly, technically the applicant has to withdraw and reapply so that we get a quorum of members that have sat on the hearing. Um, so we only have two members that were at the last meeting. If we discuss it, we're pretty much, we can't vote. We're, we're cooked right now if we vote. Well, I think that, I think the, the only way around that right now is, is, um, could continue it to the same group was here from last time. No, I think you, you could do that. Uh, you'd almost have to start back from the, I could give a full yeah. presentation to the members. I, that I don't are here. believe that's true anymore. They've changed a lot of that. And I would not be comfortable, to be honest with you. I think um, well, if okay. that is not the case, then... Yeah, I don't want to certainly, certainly nullify the, yeah. the again, hearing. Again, they did change the Mullen rule laws fairly recently. And my understanding is one member can miss one meeting, and they have to review the documentation, sign a legal document that says they understand X, Y, and Z. They, 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 what, they, they no longer allow a complete review of all the information at the previous hearing. You know, the person has okay. to read the minutes, sign the document that says, I read and understand. Tonight we have two members that can't do that. So 
Um, my only, the only options that exist is to continue until the next time until we have the same group of people here. Again, we can have more people, but we, we need those other two members that we had last time. Right, but they still can present the information. I don't think that's wise, to be honest with you, because then the two well, then members the other that two, aren't, okay, here yeah, yeah. aren't hearing it. So now they, it, it's this legal mess that my recommendation is to not discuss any merits of the case tonight, continue it to the next hearing. If we discuss it now, then the other two members. Well, the state has even made it, the court, like, as you said, the court system has even made it more difficult uh, for us. Okay, yeah, so my recommendation is not to do that, because then the other two members are going to have to read the minutes and the minutes, I think, had to be approved for them to read it and, and mm -hmm. sign this doc. So that means our minutes have to be done within a week, get them to sign it. It's really complicated, and I don't think it's the way to go. Sorry to be well, the... It's, it's really, it's not, it's not the town's fault. <clears throat> or the court system. Well, you guys are here. You know, I appreciate you coming to me. So does that mean we can't present tonight? Unfortunately. Well, what, yeah. I guess what he's, he's... I mean, you can, but it's not he, in your advantage. Because then the next hearing, if you don't... if the You need the other two commissioners who aren't here tonight. They need to be here for all of the discussions, not just one of them. Or not so just two of them. Is two people missing? Yes. Oh, okay. We have one new member, and Steve wasn't here for your last hearing. I see. We had four people. Those two guys are missing. I see. Again, it's, it's a technicality, but right. Right. we can't really do anything and if we do proceed we know it's not illegal we can't proceed well it, the, the, if we if we would vote it wouldn't be a valid vote it wouldn't be a legal vote yeah. I mean if that's I think commissions do that on occasion because they don't know any better but well it that doesn't make it right or this illegal. is how the whole Mullen rule became a court yeah. a court issue and so again there's a couple ways we can handle this my recommendation is just to continue it straight up to the next meeting um, and again quote unquote I'll work on the commissioners to be here, but if they're not here, we're going to run into the same problem. If we discuss it tonight, it's just going to complicate the situation all the well, more. Well, I think we have to make it very clear, uh, you know, to be fair to the applicant, uh, the other commissioners yeah. have to be here. And if um, John shows up, then we're good. I believe right? I have to check. John, I think it's it not fair to them. But is it John or Tim? I'll find out who was. John and Tim. It was the four of us, yeah. So as long as one of them shows up and you guys are both here, we're good to go. Um, neither one of you guys can mm. vote on it at this point. So. Could by could next they, meeting, if, if they're not here, could someone call us prior to coming in? That One of the problems with the way it serves, I don't always know who's going to be here and who's not here, and often it happens like absolutely well, last second. So I know your engineer is here. Yeah. I, 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 trust me, this is not our first rodeo. This you know, when it happens, it's inconvenient for all of us, mostly you guys. Cause commissioners, you guys to, be, to answer your question, commissioners are supposed to let us know when they're not going to be here. So we can, we can do our best to make sure we know and, and try and let you know if that would be the case. Obviously, we wanted to move forward. I don't want cases malingering that I can't move forward or backward or anyway. Right. It doesn't help anyone. No, I understand that. It's just it's through this whole process is costing kind of a lot of money to go through this whole thing. So. See, apparently the way they've changed this, it was easier before. We could, we could just redo the information and, and bring new commissioners in, but apparently they've made it more difficult for us, so... When is your next meeting? 20, April 25th. I think we have a 8, I think 8, 15. 7, 15. Um, 7, we have another 15. hearing, other yes. cases that oh, night. Yeah. So 8, oh. 15, please. Sure. Make a motion to uh, continue. April 25th, 8, 15. Second. We have a motion. It's been seconded to continue the uh, notice of intent for 27 Pillsbury Street to April 25th at 8, 15 p.m., is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All abstaining? So if I know there's not going to be a quorum? Yeah. Again, I, I, I apologize, but I guess it's outside of my control. It's really nothing I can do about blame it. Blame him. Just that guy right there. Well, I think you need to blame a little higher up. Like probably those guys <laughs> at the State House. Oh, we'll judge be, level. We'll be back in a month. Yes. Thank you very Again, much. Again, I, I apologize. Sorry. Sorry. It's kind of news to me in that sense. The modifications of the Mullen rule. So, uh, yeah, you know, in due diligence, uh, we need to make sure those those other commissioners are aware 
that um, them not showing up causes a hearing to be hanging out there. So we need to make that very clear to them that they need a good excuse not to come. And I mean, it's just not, uh, it's going to cause problems. And it's not fair to the applicant. So I'm handing around the, um, the appointment to the open space member, Mr. Wade, for you guys to sign. I this one. And I'm handing around the determination of applicability for the um, National Grid Project that you guys approved a few minutes ago. And there's a couple of different places to sign. There's three spots for you guys to sign on that document. The only other issue, and this might be a record meeting, is not issue, um, discussion. It's so Pentucket Pond at the dam. Mm -hmm. when you go on the Pond Street. There's a long chain link fence. Yes, I drive by it every day. I don't know the history per se. You weren't here for that. Oh. No, it was not. Um, there's really? a request right now from some butters to have the fence taken down to some degree. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't I, think it's relevant. And I don't as honestly I, know. As the I reason. recall, I think Peter came in at. I don't know, a year ago or six months ago or something, they have a discussion on that? Yeah. They, so we went to the selectmen and they kind of asked, how is this impacting, um, you know, the environment? Is there a reason for it to be there one way or another environmentally? And I have my theories, but I just wanted to let open up to you guys and see if you guys had any opinion. Because <laughs> I'm pretty much being asked what we think of it, and I can give my opinion all day. I don't have much of a necessarily. A well, stuff. since I, I probably spend more time going by it than anyone. Um, and you're the harbor master of the pond. So yes. You know, um, speak to other safety issues. Yeah, I, th I think it was originally put up in, in the belief that it was a, it was a safety issue, but uh, I think it does cause some environmental concerns too. In what direction? Actually, um, it, it the biggest problem is that the fence is too low to the ground. Mm -hmm. And it constantly actually blocks turtles from crossing the road, and they get stuck in the in, kill, in the street. A kill zone. I so probably zone. every spring rescue you know dozens driving by there, and they can't get off the road. So I thought of that too, but in one direction it might be a good thing because it keeps them from traveling across the road from the pond side. Well, they they get out there and they don't know if to go. They don't go back. Yeah. I mean, but I guess going the other direction, they're trapped. But it also might prevent them from coming out of the pond. So I wasn't really. 200% sure, you know, there's, there's a good negative and positive to that, that argument. Um, they don't read the signs. True. So, I, I mean, I see that, that issue quite often. Yeah. Any one more signature? Yeah. All right. Nice. Give one more then. Get three done. I mean, I think, you know, they may have, uh, the thinking may have been to put that uh, there to keep people just away from the water, mm -hmm. uh, fooling around the dam. So, the fish bladder. So, is that, is that even working? Do we know? Um, it's not, the, the state is actually looking to redesign it yeah. to um, make improvements to it. That, well, like, that has not really um, thing is, come to fruition I mean, yet. I think we've got to talk to George about that because if, if they're not okay. fixed down river, they're not going to even make it to that one. I so actually got I got a call from the state. They're actually going to um, they're starting a program this season where they're going to catch some down river and dump them into Kentucky Pond. So that's kind of neat. Nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, uh, was recently I met someone from the uh, state marine fisheries division, and uh, they were talking about their dam program, and I uh, inquired about <laughs> whether they had any funding since it is a you know a, a yeah. unfunded state, mandate uh, pretty much. The state water, and of course they were willing to help us technically, but when it came to funds, uh, that was another issue. Mm. What is the function of that? The fence or the dam? No, the dam. Just to control the level of the pond. Oh. Um, I, so I thought fences. you were saying it was had some fishing. Well, it has a fish ladder next to it. Oh. Yeah, built so into it. the dams, you know, on the right side, usually they'll have so the fish can get up through it. Ours like kind of goes way, basically. Ours pretty much goes up the inside, and yeah. it's, it's not very well designed. The, the current group that went out and looked at it said this isn't functioning properly. Mm -hmm. You can't maintain it. You can't clean it. Usually, you have it somewhere where you can get in there and pull brush out. Right. Ours, you need to be, you know, this th and, and slide through it. You're oh, not supposed to like maintain it. these right. things by going belly first right. down a chute. Right. You know, like a ramrod. That's not yeah. how it's properly designed. So. And I and I was very de depressed when I saw the 
that fence go up. It's like a prison gauntlet. Well, actually, the, the fit, there, there, was, there was a fence there, but it was a low fence. Yeah. I think that's what they probably replace it with. I mean, it was and only uh, looking for input from us. So maybe it was all. I so mean, maybe, that was all done by the state. But I what mean, is the function of the fence anyway? They said safety. Safety for what? Again, keeping kids kids from you know falling in the water or what have you. Yeah, I think it should be like a guardrail type of a thing. And again, I think what I'll bring back from the commission is that we're not really concerned about the fence as long as whatever is there allows passage. So if there is a fence there, it's above six inches. You know, six inches and up. Because really what we're speaking to is the environmental cause. Yep. Again, if you guys don't like the look of it, good. But that's not the feedback I get to bring back to them. It's no, I mean, right, because the, the state put it there. And it's an environmental issue. Our, 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 end our of comment this. Is, is environmental. So right. it's we're concerned about the turtle passes. So whatever it is, whether the fence goes away or stays, that it go up six inches is what I'm bringing back. So and it, it does good. go right down to the road and the rocks there. And, yep. and actually, I, I, turtles cannot get under that. Okay. And... Um, Especially some of the bigger ones, they 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 just gonna get stuck, yep. and they, it's it's very common. Actually, this this past spring, I happened to stop one of the vehicles to to rescue a turtle. It happened to be one of the environmental police pickup trucks. Oh, awesome! <laughs> and he, he he says, you know, you know, good job. And, <laughs> and I awesome. said, I'm doing your job. Yeah. So I mean, it, it it is an issue, and I've had to do that many many times. So I mean, since I go there every every morning and every evening. Usually in the morning, once the spring comes, they'll be they'll be out there. So, so yeah, I, I do do have some issue with it, and uh, would like to see it modified. The lowness of it also makes it hard to keep the bittersweet and stuff cut. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so if it's higher, it's better. If it's yep. gone, it's probably best. I think the the guardrail is. I mean, that keeps the cars yeah. from going in the pond if they run off the road. Is there is there a guardrail right there now? Yep. I forget. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's some concern about trash being dumped. So one of the arguments was that the fence keeps people from dumping trash down there. Like people fishing, they drop something. Mm -hmm. The area pools trash naturally because it's the end of the pond where all the stuff drifts down. But you can almost make an argument that it's better to not have the fence there because then you can get down there to clean it out easier. Right. But right now, it's hard to get down there to get the trash. So it, well, again, what do people end up doing? I mean, they're still going to fish down there. They just end up walking from the corner yeah. on the rocks so, down there. Yeah. So the argument that people are dropping trash is not, I think, very legitimate. There's not much guardrail. More fence okay. from the picture. You just happen to have a picture of it. Oh yeah, convenient. So I'll bring back that feedback. Um, I think that's all I got. Oh, make a motion to. Uh, so the, you're you're making that um, or providing that information to the board of selectmen? I mean, yes. I, Mike, Mike asked me if we had any input on the discussion. So I'll just type up a. Okay. Well, and, and, and well, I'm trying to figure out legally how that gets done. As far as is it, does it need any kind of a hearing or? Well, uh, if they cut it off, say they get rid of the fence. One, depending on the, what they. Well, technically, do, that should be like an RDA. Depending on what they do, we can figure out from there what the permitting process. I think would right be. now, we should ask for uh, eight inches taken off the right. bottom, so there's so they can go the in critter, and cut, yep. the critters can make their way through. But we don't know what the selectmen are going to where they're going to go. They're going to take all this information in and, yep. and make their recommendations. Get rid of it, cut it up six inches, cut it down no, two feet and up six. From a, from a legal hearing standpoint, because it's next mm -hmm. to a water resource, it actually agree. should go in as, as an RDA. But huh? it depends on what they do, I guess, is my point. I don't want to say they have to file an RDA because if they're taking, say they're chopping the top foot off, when they figure out what they're going to do, I'll make my recommendations of how to proceed as far as the permitting process. If they cut the top two feet off, do you think they need to file an RDA? Well, what they did you if they it? if they remove it from the ground, I agree. But if they cut the top two feet off, we don't know what they're going to determine. Right. So I, I want to hold off on making predetermining what type of filing process. If they're digging the pipes out of the ground, I think it's a notice of intent. We don't know what they're going to do, right. so I think we should hold off on figuring out how to. Well, it, I, I would think that would be at least the the proponent of the project would be Peter. I agree. I agree. But also, I mean, the, that also brings up the issue of the whole um, access to the dam and mm -hmm. cost. the whole thing. Yeah. Cost. I mean, it's a good opportunity to bring these. Yeah. This is a discussion item. That's going to come in. He usually does. He does. Did we get a second on that motion to close from Mr. John Bell? Second. I don't think we did. We have a motion. It's been seconded to close the hearing of March 21st, 2013. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining?
Have a good evening.